In this short little video, you'll learn how to build a home surveillance system all by yourself. You can use a single board computer like a Raspberry Pi or an old PC or a laptop you have laying around. All you need is a couple of cameras, a computer, Raspberry Pi in my case, and an internet connection. The OS I will use is called Motion iOS. In this video I'll be covering a lot of stuff, and before I show you the long steps of installing everything, I'll guide you through the interface so you can see how it all looks in the end. After that, I will talk a bit about cameras, and devices that are supported by Motion iOS. I made a separate section where I'll talk about SD cards, and that will be useful if you plan to build this project using a Pi. Then you'll see me download the OS burn it to the card and set up everything. I'll guide you through the web interface configuration process and in the end you will be able to access the web UI from anywhere in the world without being connected to your local network. You can access the Motion iWeb web interface from your browser. To do so, enter the IP address of the device you are running the service from. You will be greeted by a login screen. After you log in, the cameras are immediately shown, and mine are set up to capture footage every time motion is detected. By clicking on one of the cameras, extra options are shown. You can toggle full screen for each camera, see the captured videos and photos, and access settings. Users are separated into admin and surveillance account. This can be useful if you want to give access to more people without giving them permission to change settings. By clicking on the hamburger menu on the top left, you can configure stuff like layouts, network, video devices, motion detection, etc. I will show you how to set all of these for best performance later. The first step to get this running is to prepare the hardware, so let's talk about cameras. Up until now I used webcams, because I thought they were a simple way to connect everything together and since I already had a few of them at home I didn't have to buy anything. After some research I found out that IP cameras would actually be a better solution. You can find cameras such as TP-Link, Tapo C100 and C200 for 20 to 40 bucks. They are more expensive than a basic webcam, but they can record at night and they are connected to your network wirelessly. You just give them power and that's it. For this demonstration, I'll use a Raspberry Pi 3B+. You can check all supported boards on this page and I'll leave a link down below. Raspberry Pi boots from an SD card, so that's the next thing we are going to look into. SD cards come in different sizes, capacity and speeds. Most modern Pis use a micro SD card, while this old one uses a full size one. If your Pi has a full size SD card slot, but you have a micro SD card, you can use an adapter to connect them together. Next, let's talk about capacity. Motion iOS can be used to record video and photos, which are then stored onto the Pi. Taking this into consideration, it would be best to get a high capacity card so you don't have to transfer or delete your files often. My Pi can support a 32GB card maximum, which is not that much. Pi 4 on the other hand can support up to 2TB, which would be awesome, but I don't have a Pi 4 at hand, so I'll have to continue with less storage. Size and capacity are covered. And the last thing to check is the speed of the card. This is really important. There are different speed classes, which are shown in this table. Class 2 is good enough only for recording standard quality video, while class 4 and 6 can handle full HD. They are categorized in normal speed bus mode, for a card that's going to be used for booting an OS and recording multiple videos at a single time, I wouldn't go lower than high speed. Class 10 will work, but if you have a UHS card it would be even better. Take your SD card and backup everything, formatting the card deletes everything, so if you have anything important make sure to transfer it somewhere else. With the Pi and SD card ready, we can continue by installing the Motion iOS on the card. Go back to the supported devices page and find your board. Click on the latest version and download it. Once the OS is downloaded, we can burn it to the card. My favorite tool to do this is Raspberry Pi Imager. You can find the link to it in the description. Connect your SD card to the computer and start Raspberry Pi Imager. Click Choose OS and scroll down until you see Use Custom option. Click Use Custom and select the file you just downloaded. Then click Choose Storage and select the SD card you just plugged in. Make sure you select the right card because this step will format everything and all data will be lost. Before writing to the card, click on the cog icon. If it's missing, you can use Ctrl plus Shift plus X shortcut. Hostname can be used instead of typing the IP address, but for this install I'll leave it as is. SSH enables us to log in into the Pi wirelessly from the network, without connecting a keyboard and a monitor to the Pi. I use SSH on every server I built so far, so I'll continue with SSH box check. Underneath, you can Set your username and password. I'm going to leave it as is because in Motion iOS you will need to change it later. Default username is Pi and password Raspberry. Next settings are for connecting the Pi to the internet. You need to enter your Wi-Fi SSID and password, SSID being the network name. 
and don't forget to change the LAN country as well. If you don't want to go wireless, just make sure your LAN cable is connected to the Pi. And last thing, set your time zone and keyboard layout. Click save and write. Everything will be erased. Do you want to continue? Click yes. This process can take a few minutes. Just make sure to not touch anything and let it do its thing. After it's done, you will get a message like this. Click continue and remove the SD card from the computer. Plug in the card and connect the Pi to a power supply. The first boot usually takes longer, but you can log in into your router and wait for the Pi to show up under connected devices. In my case the Pi didn't connect, and to try to fix it, you can power off the Pi and connect the SD card back to the computer. On the root directory of the card, create a new text file. Paste these few lines from the description and edit your SSID and your password. Save the document and rename it to wpa-supplicant.conf. Make sure to change the file extension as well. Eject the card and boot the Pi again. After confirming the Pi is connected to the network, I like to give it a static IP address, so it doesn't change when the router is rebooted. The easiest way to do this is from the router settings. In my case it's going to be 192.168.069. Then we can try to SSH into the Pi. Open your terminal and type SSH admin at your IP address. Then you need to type yes and enter your password. I will CD out and type ls to show the files in the current directory. I will enter the uname a command to see the system info and since everything looks fine we can try to access the web UI. Go to your favorite browser and type the IP address of your Pi in the search bar. If everything is right, you should see a login screen. Default username is admin and there is no password. So let's create a password. Go to the hamburger menu on the top left corner and you can see the admin and user profile. Admin can make changes to the system while surveillance user can only watch what's going on. Change both and click apply on the top. Connect a webcam to the Pi and click add camera. Camera type can be left as is and under it, you can select the camera you just connected and you can see that the stream started immediately. Go to the video device section and make the changes as you wish and change both layout columns and rows to 2. Text overlay in my case is too small and we can adjust the text scale at the overlay section. Scale 6 works great for my camera and resolution. Video streaming can be left as is but I like the camera to record while motion is detected. To do that enable motion detection and movies. Select the recording mode to motion triggered and for motion I found these settings to be the best. Frame change threshold at 0.2%, motion gap at 2, captured before 2, captured after 3, minimum motion frames 6 and that's it. Click apply and let's test it out. When I move my hand on camera 1, recording starts and the camera window has a red outline. The red outline means that the camera is recording. By clicking on the camera you get more options and we are interested in the video camera 1 just recorded. Click on the movies icon and your videos are stored here. You can preview, download and delete them. If you want to dump all videos you have a delete all button at the bottom. You can toggle the camera to full screen mode and if you want to take pictures you can open the picture library as well. I'm pretty happy with how this works so far. So I'm ready to add more cameras. I'll connect another webcam to the Pi and do the changes as before. From this point you can add even more cameras. Just make sure to not overload your power supply so the Pi doesn't die on you. You can't damage it, it will just stop working. And get Wi-Fi IP cameras if you can. They require an outlet and the connection is wireless. Plus you have night vision on most of them. The web interface we just set up can be accessed only from your local network. If you try to access it without connecting to your Wi-Fi, you would get an error. To solve this problem, I'll use port forwarding. Please note that this method is not secure, but until I figure out how OpenVPN works, I'll have to use this one. You need three things. Your public IP address, which you need to keep to yourself. You need the IP address of the Pi and a port you want to forward. My router asks for a port range, which is even better, since I'd like to be able to SSH into the Pi as well. Web Websites generally use port 80 and SSH uses port 22. A port range of 20 to 100 will be fine for my case. After you apply the settings, you may need to reboot the router as well. After that's set, we can test if we did it correctly. I'll disconnect from my Wi-Fi and I'll try to SSH into the Pi first. In the IP field, type your public IP address and port is automatically set to 22. And looks like everything works. Let's try to access the website. Let's go into the browser and into search bar, let's type our public IP address followed by 80, which is the website we want to access. Log in and everything works the same as if we were connected to the Wi-Fi. 
Motion Eye can be very useful if you need to check up on something while you're away, but from my perspective it's powerful enough to use it as an AVR and a legit home security system. I like this method since my videos are not going to a separate cloud where they can be easily exposed. The main security issue at the moment is that I port forwarded the Pi. Using a VPN would be a much safer option, but again I don't want to use a VPN provider, I want to create my own. It's in progress and it should be done soon. I'll make a video about it when it's ready. And that's it, thanks for sticking to the end, if you have any questions leave them down below. Make sure to check some of my other videos and all of the parts I used in this video will be linked in the description. So if you need something, make sure to check it out. Thank you for watching and see you next time.